Hi, many of you are guessed. This is going to be a lecture on metric spaces. Yes, you're right. It's going to be a first of a series of lectures on metric spaces. I don't know how many lectures will be there, but I just want to tell you something. Okay, all of you may know about my book on metric spaces. I don't plan to cover all because that will take about 60 to 70 lectures. So it's not possible. But what I plan to do is to introduce the basic theory of metric spaces, which will be needed either to understand analysis on Rn or functional analysis or as a stepping stone to general topology in your MSc. Okay. And even if a complex analysis you want to learn, this should be enough. So to achieve that, what I plan to do is I define metric spaces and give a very small set of examples. Okay. So any concepts we will do with the metric spaces, introducing metric spaces, we'll come back to these examples and understand them so that you will be able to have some kind of confidence about the concepts and you will be able to work with metric spaces in general. Whereas in my book, I deal with a lot of examples which are needed in functional analysis and other parts of mathematics. But as I said, here my limit scope is limited. Okay. So without wasting any more time, let us get started. Yeah. Of course, the references, as I said, uh, topology of metric spaces, my book. So the beginning thing is what well, I assume all of you have little bit of real analysis background, at least. So I'm going to start with that. So what we know, if I have R, I know what is meant by a sequence Xn in of real sequence, which converges to X. What is the meaning? Okay, this is the picture I have. I have X here. And you give me any epsilon positive, I form the open interval X minus epsilon to X plus epsilon. Right? Then I want to say there exists an actual number n. With what property? For every k greater than equal to n, modulus xn minus x is less than epsilon. That is same as saying my xn belong to the interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon. Okay, for k greater than equal to n, my xk lies here. Somewhere in this interval. Okay. Right. Now suppose I want to generalize it to a lot lot more classes. Suppose X is just a set. Okay. And I'm sure all of you know what is all of you know what is meant by a sequence X and in X. That is a function X from natural number to capital X and its value at n we denoted by X n. Then we call this X n as a sequence. Then suppose X is a point in X. I want to define what is meant by X and converge to X. I want to make a me okay, have some kind of a sense for this. Okay. Let us look at this example of a real sequence. So when I wanted to say X and converge to X, what all I needed was something very interesting. You give me any epsilon, right? Then I wanted to say after a certain stage, that is after stage capital N, all my XK are at a distance less than epsilon from X, right? Because mod X and minus X, how do I think of it geometrically? I think of it the distance from X and, and X, the distance between X and X, right? Yeah. So in some sense, if I have the notion of a distance between two points in X, suppose I have something called a distance. Okay, let me call it. Given X1, X and Y. Okay, suppose I have the notion of distance. Okay. What are the properties it requires? I do not know at present. I do not want to formulate, but once you have this, I can formulate this. When do I say x and converge to x? If for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a natural number n, so that for all k greater than equal, greater than equal to n, distance between x and, and x should be less than epsilon. That's it. So you see that? This definition still makes sense. Right? So I want a distance. First thing is you notice that since I want it to be less than epsilon, it, this is 
okay to make some kind of a restriction naturally i want the distance to be non negative positive then only this makes if it is negative it is always less than epsilon right so we want to understand what are the conditions i have to put for the distance function on x so this is called distance function on x what are the conditions okay so as in gen usual in mathematics what you do is you want to generalize this case special case and the special case you try to understand carefully okay so how did we think of the distance distance between x and y in r is mod x minus y so let us try to understand so what is the distance on r okay we already know but i am just saying okay let me call it distance so what does it mean give me any two real numbers x y in r then distance between x and y is by definition mod x minus y okay right so what are the properties it has first notice that d of x y is always greater than equal to 0 and two and when is d of x y is 0 this is true for all x y in r when is d of x y is 0 if that is if only if mod x minus y is 0 which is if only if x equal to y right and yeah and the third see notice that this is an ordered per x and y i can interchange distance between y and x i can ask okay then what we want to say distance between x and y is same as distance between y and x there is no difference because mod x minus y is same as mod y minus x and what is the fourth condition usually one and two are club together in books anyway okay what it says is given any for every x and y in r and for any real number t in r okay right let us look at mod x minus y this is less than equal to mod x minus t plus mod t minus y this is true for every t in r i am just writing it separately because textbooks will simply write for every x y t in r mod x minus y is less than equal to t i want to write it separately are, are you following you are given an x and y then i want to estimate mod x minus y. i will explain why i want to do that see most often in analysis you could you could have seen the triangle inequality where do you use to estimate things so i may not know the distance between x and y that is mod x minus y i may not know but i want to estimate it maybe i want to show it is less than epsilon okay i may not be able to prove directly so what will i do okay choose a t okay i should be an intelligent choice very smart choice okay in such a way that mod x minus y is okay mod x minus t plus mod t minus y this may be less than epsilon by 2 this may be epsilon by 2 therefore this becomes epsilon by 2 you understand that so this way of formulating triangle inequality tells you that okay this is true for every t but what is important is if you want to estimate mod x minus y you have to choose t carefully this is what usually i call as curry leaf okay if you have seen my real analysis book or videos you will know that word but anyway let's not worry about this is called triangle inequality okay so these are the four properties which uh, the distance function on r has what is the distance function on r distance between x and y is mod x minus y so now we can define suppose x is any non empty set here after i will simply say set i mean non empty set okay then what is the distance distance function is a map from x cross x to r okay why i want to say x cross x because remember i said an ordered pair ordered pairs are elements of the cartesian product right okay so what is the first condition i need this distance function okay this d takes value non negative values you can also write a zero to infinity perhaps but usually i write like this and second condition distance between x and y is zero if and only if x equal to y so i call okay i want to define a distance function on x that must be a function from x cross x to r but i want it to satisfy these conditions exactly these four conditions that is why i wrote it as d instead of mod x minus y okay so now can you tell me what is the third condition yes third condition is 
See, T is a function from ordered per x, y, right? The ordered per x, y and the ordered per y, x, if y and x are different, then this, they are not the same. Therefore, distance between d of y, x may, may be a different real number, non-negative number, but what I want is they should be the same. This is called symmetry. Okay? And what is the fourth condition? Fourth condition is this. That is, for give me any x and y in x, then I know what is the distance between x and y. I may not know, but I want to estimate it. How will I do that? This must be true for all x and t and t and y. This must be true for every t in r. So I will usually write for every t in r separately, but usually textbooks will write for every x, y, t in r. But they are the same. But why I am writing t separately is that t is my choice. If I want to estimate distance between x and y, then I can choose t more intelligently in a very smart way so that I can estimate the distance between x and y. That is the reason why I am writing t separately. Okay, this is called triangle and equality. So, suppose I was at x and a distance function d, okay, x cross x2 or satisfying 1, one to 4, then I call d as a distance function or a metric. on x right see i call it d x d as a metric on x but d is a function from x cross x to r do you understand that d is not a function on x it is a function on x cross x but i call d as a metric because this and the ordered pair is called a metric space okay please go through the definition once again Start with how we looked at the distance on R and abstracted the properties and then we define metric. Okay. okay. Now let's look at examples. How much time is for? Still 48. Okay. Now let's look at examples of metric spaces. What are examples of metric spaces? As you already know, I am somewhat impatient fellow. Hereafter, I will write m dot s for a metric space. The first example is, of course, R. What is the metric? Metric is the standard. This is why I will call it standard metric. Okay. Right. Okay. This we had already checked because our definition of D came out of this observations for the properties of this distance. Right. So there is nothing to check. The, okay, but the next most important example is Rn. This is the ordered n tuples. Okay, I will simply write it as x. This is a vector in Rn. Think of it as a vector in Rn. I am sure that all of you have learned some linear algebra, right? Okay, so I will write only x, right? And if for slightly uneasy, you look at n equal to 2, and I will also emphasize n equal to 2 or n equal to 3 if and when necessary, right? So, all of you know in coordinate geometry, okay, if you are given 2, n equal to 2, in coordinate geometry or 2, here I will not write x1, x2, I will write as xy and let us say uv. These are two points in R2. What is the distance between them? You write, wrote it by means of Pythagoras theorem. This is xy, this is uv, this distance is what I want, you want that, what you did is, you did the Pythagoras distance because this is x this is u and this is y and this is b so this distance squared this distance squared will be this distance squared therefore distance between x y and u v was this is in r2 mm -hmm. non-negative square root, okay? This is what is called Pythagorean distance because we, we got it from Pythagoras, okay? You can do anyway, right? You understand? Okay. That 
we are not going to do that now. Okay, you will be surprised. We will do it later. Okay, the distance I want to do is slightly different. What I want to do is I, I will call it d max or d infinity, that is d infinity of x, two vectors x and y by definition is look at the absolute value of mod xi minus yi. Okay, one less than equal to i less than equal to n. And take the maximum. That's it. This is maximum of mod xi minus yi one less than equal to i less than equal to n. Let us look at some examples so that you have p. See, these are all finite numbers, right? Mod xi minus y. How many numbers are there? N numbers. So this is a finite set of non-negative real numbers. Okay, it's a finite set of real numbers. Therefore, maximum always exists. So that maximum is what I'm going to call the max distance or d, d infinity distance between x and y. So what does it say? Let us try to look at some example. Okay, suppose I have a point here and I have a point here, right? Right, so let us call this point. And I am looking at again R2, x, y, u, v. Right, so what does it say? It says take the difference between the, see what is x? x equal to x1, x2, xn, y equal to y1, y2. And therefore x1 minus y1 modulus, x2 minus y2. Here, mod x minus y, u. That means you drop this here, okay? This is u and this is x. So this is one distance. Okay, let us call it a name. This is mod u minus r x minus u, doesn't matter. You understand this? Yeah. All right. Now, what do you what is that I want? Next one is x2 minus y2. That is second coordinate minus second coordinate of the second vector. All right. Now let's look at the second coordinate. That is going to be this fellow. And here it is going to be this fellow. So this is the distance. Do you follow that? So what is that I want? This may be slightly distracting. So let us do that. Forget it. You see that? So among these two things, you take the maximum. Either this distance or this distance. If you want a simpler example, let us look at this. So this is this distance or this distance. So this is uv, this is xy, and therefore this is mod x minus u is this, mod y minus v is this. So what is uh, the distance between these two points, namely this one. And here, the picture, I think this seems to be again the green one. This is the day infinity distance. Are you following? Okay. Now, <clears throat> So in particular, let us look at some simple example. Suppose I take the point minus one comma two, that's my thing, and the other point is one comma three. Okay. Now what is the distance between these two points? I have to look at minus one comma one. That is minus one minus one, and then take my two minus three and take the maximum. This fellow is two. This fellow is one. Therefore, distance is two. Do you agree with that? Please play with it. Whenever we have this kind of definition, you should play with it. Okay. I still have to prove some metric, which I am going to do in a minute. Okay. So is it a is d infinity a metric? Okay. Okay. Is d infinity greater than equal to zero? Yes, because it's a maximum of mod xi minus yi one less than equal to i less than equal to m. Right, therefore, what do I know? Each one of this is non negative, therefore, maximum will also be non negative. Good, and suppose d infinity of xy is zero, that means maximum of mod xi minus y is zero. That means for each i, mod xi minus y is zero. That means for each i, xi equal to yi. That means the vector x equal to y. Do you understand this? When are two vectors in Rn equal? the th coordinate of x must be equal to th coordinate of y for every i, right? Okay. And what is the third? And it's obvious is d infinity of xy 
is same as d infinity of y x. That's again clear because what is this? This is maximum of mod x i minus y i. I will not write i here. Is that all right? This is maximum of mod y i minus x i, right? But notice that for each i, this quantity mod x i minus y is same as mod x i mod y i minus x i. Therefore, this set, which set, this is a set of n numbers, and this set of n numbers, they are the one and the same. Therefore, their maxima are also the same. That means this is true. Do all of you agree with that? Okay. Now the third thing I have to say: triangle inequality. Most of the cases you will see. Most of the cases there are exceptions, of course. Triangle inequality is the one which requires little thinking. Okay, there is one place where that is obvious. Okay, obvious meaning because of some other theorem. Anyway, triangle inequality. How do I do that? What is that I have to prove? So you are going to give me three vectors x, y, two vectors m, then. For any vector t in R n, I have to prove the following: d infinity of x y is less than or equal to d infinity of x t and plus d infinity of t y. Is it alright if I drop d, write d for d infinity, so that it will my time will be saved? Okay. And what is this? By definition, this by definition is maximum of mod x i minus y i. Okay. Again. Okay, I want to say this maximum is less than equal to this number. Notice that these are all finite numbers. Now this is where a very crucial observation comes. What is the crucial observation? Suppose a equal to a one to a k. Okay, it's a finite subset of real numbers, and alpha is a real number. Now since a is a finite set, maximum of a exists. Okay, it must be one of the a j, perhaps some a j. Right? Okay. Now suppose I want to say maximum of a is less than equal to alpha. This is what I want to prove. You understand this? Right? I I may not be able to find out what is the maximum, but I want to say maximum of a a is less than equal to alpha. Okay. This is equivalent to proving this happens if and only for each i, a i is less than equal to alpha. Do you agree with that? Because if a is less than equal to alpha, the maximum a j is also here. Therefore, a j will be less than equal to alpha, right? And suppose maximum of a is a j, then if it is less than equal to alpha, since a j is a maximum, a is less than equal to a j, but a j is less than equal to alpha. Therefore, maximum of a is less than equal to alpha. Do you understand this? Pause, review, proceed. So, if I have a finite subset of real numbers. To prove its maximum is less than equal to alpha, okay, it is wiser to prove each and every element of A is less than equal to alpha. That is the basic idea you should have in mind. You will see how repeatedly we will use it, okay. Even in analysis, you replace this by my LUB, but it's the same trick. So let's come back. So if I want to prove my maximum of mod x i minus y i is less than equal to this number, this is your alpha. This is your a. So maximum of a is less than equal to alpha. How will I prove that? According to this principle, I have to prove each a is less than equal to alpha. You understand that? So enough to show mod x i minus y i is less than equal to d of x t. Remember, d of x t is d infinity plus d of t y. This is true. I have to prove for every i, right? But what is t? T is t one to t n. Now By triangle inequality, I already know d x i minus y i is less than equal to x i minus t i for any t. It is true, but what t I am going to choose? You know, you see that I am choosing my t smart. Okay, not any t j or t one or t n. I am choosing t i. That will be less than equal and y i minus sorry t i minus y i. Do you understand this? Right. But notice that. Okay, mod x i minus y i, that will be less than equal to distance between x and t. Why? Because distance between x and t is maximum of all mod x i minus t i. You understand that? Yeah. Right. 
This is like this. A will be Ladha equal to AJ. That's what I'm using. Right? And similarly, this will be Ladha equal to T of Y. Yeah? You understand this? Mod XI minus YI, 1 Ladha equal to I, Ladha equal to infinity. Sorry, Ladha equal to N. This is D infinity of XY. Okay? This is maximum of this. What does it mean? This is greater than equal to each and every number. That means mod xi minus y is less than equal to the distance between x and y. That's what I'm writing. Uh, right? Now, what do you think I have proved? I have proved for each i mod xi minus y i is less than equal to d of x t plus d of y t. Therefore, d of x y itself is less than equal to d of x t plus d of t y for every t in R. All right. So triangle inequality is also true. Therefore, D infinity is a metric on Rn. Okay, pause, review, proceed. Okay, now we want to look at the next example. Let me see how much time you have. Oh, 29 minutes. So, so the next example again is Rn, but with what I call is a metric D1. Let me again explain it with respect to R2. So suppose I have two points X, Y and U, V. Okay. Now the way I sum is look at from here. Suppose you think of a road. Then I will travel from here to here and then take, take this road to travel from here to here. You understand that? Yeah, suppose I have a point here, I have a point here, I'll come down, go up, or also I can equally do like this. I can go up and then come down. Right? So can you can you guess how to write down the metric? D1. Okay, let us write D1 of X, Y, U, V. How will you write it? This is this is which point? This is U comma Y. Yes, x coordinate and y is the same. So this distance is mod x minus u, and this distance is mod y minus v. You understand? That is yours. Earlier, what did we do? You look at mod xi minus yi, take the maximum. Here, what I were doing? Mod xi minus yi, and add all of them. Are you following? Therefore, distance between x and y is by definition mod xi minus yi i equal to 1 to n. This is our definition. Okay, this is called some metric d1, 1 for sum. Have you understood? Yeah. So let us look at the earlier example. Somewhere we looked at, uh, yeah. Now let us look at minus 1 to uh, 2, minus 1, 2, 1, 3, D infinity metric is 2, but what will be D1 metric of minus 1, 2 and 1, 3? Okay, this will be minus 1, minus 1, plus 2, minus 3, that is 2 plus 1, that is equal to 3. Yeah, do you understand this? Okay, now let's go do the general checking. I would like to check whether this is a metric. Is the first property true? True. Is the second property, if d1 of xy is 0, what does it mean? It means summation mod xi minus y is 0. But this is the sum of non-negative numbers, that is 0, that means for each i mod xi minus y is 0. That is only for each i x i equal to y i. That, but that is if only if the vector x equal to the vector y. Yeah? So 2 is also true. Now 3 is obvious. d1 of x y is d1 of y x y. d1 of y x will be mod y i minus x i. But each of the i th someone, okay, correspond, the corresponding i th someone, they are all equal. Therefore, this is clear. Right? The i th summon here is x i minus y i for this. For this i th summon it is mod y i minus x i, but they are equal. Therefore, each 
ஐயத்து டேர்ம் கரஸ்பாண்டிங் ஐயத்து டேர்ம்ஸ் ஆர் ஈக்குவல் தேர் ஃபோர் த சம் இஸ் ஈக்குவல் சம் ஓகே குட் நவ் ஃபோர்த் திங் வாட் இஸ் தட் ஐ வாண்ட் டு டூ யூ ஸ்டார்ட் வித் எக்ஸ் ஒய் இன் ஆர் என் ஐ வாண்ட் டு சே டி ஒன் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ் ஒய் இதில் தான் ஈக்குவல் டு டி ஒன் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ் டி ப்ளஸ் டி ஒன் ஆஃப் டி ஒய் ஃபார் எவ்ரி டி இன் ஆர் ஆர் என் ஓகே ஐ வாண்ட் டு செக் தட் ரைட் Now let's get what is d1 of x. This is mod xi minus yi. i equal to 1 to n. Now like last time I do that. I want to estimate mod xi minus yi. Right? What do you think I will do? Can you guess? Look at the way I did maximum. I wanted to use the triangle inequality for this metric. Okay. The triangle inequality for this metric d infinity. Followed for the triangle inequality for x. real numbers absolute value for real numbers yeah right do you follow that so here the same trick so i want to use the triangle inequality what it, so that means mod xi minus y is less than equal to mod xi minus t plus mod t is now a real number not a vector plus t mod y i what t i will choose here yes you are right mod xi minus y t i plus mod ti minus yi do you understand this this is true for every i right therefore each of the term is less than or equal to mod xi minus ti plus mod ti minus yi okay this term is less than or equal to these two terms you understand this but this is a finite sum so i can break it i can break it as xi minus ti 1 to n plus mod ti minus yi Contrian. but that is d1 of xt plus d1 of ty so triangle inequality is also tr- proved yeah please go through this so this is the third example maybe i should write as example so that people will know we are talking about examples okay now fourth example i am going to simply do it i am not going to do anything okay this is again x equal to rn and this is what we call d2 euclidean metric or pythagorean metric this is c okay these are what well, okay for r2 we already know i am going to depend on that okay so how do you define d2 of xy this is what is usually known as standard metric on R, rn also known as standard metric or euclidean metric okay right this by definition is what you do it for a r2 you do it xi minus yi whole squared i equal to 1 to n and then take its non negative square root okay see here 1 2 and 3 are okay but to prove a triangle inequality okay you need what is known as cauchy schwarz okay for n equal to 2 you had already seen it in coordinate geometry using pythagorean pythagoras theorem pythagoras theorem okay so this i am not going to prove it it will be available in a separate video which will be released simultaneously that will be called rn with dot product okay in that i will prove this okay let us assume that so therefore this is also a metric okay so we are assuming for the time being okay because it will take some time quite some time for us to prove so i don't want to waste my time so let us go look at example 6 now five sorry okay what is example five this is something interesting suppose x is any set okay now it is like you know something like uh, you know see there, there is a team leader okay there is a lot of people in that along with him in the group okay there are a lot of people okay this is the team leader now what is this 
he says okay either you are with me or you are against me nothing like neutral or anything okay you understand that either you are my friend or you are enemy there is nothing like no enemy no friend see i can be i may not be an enemy i may not be a friend also no that's not allowed either you have to be my enemy or you have to be my friend something like that here <laughs> yes okay what does it mean you give me d and x y okay suppose x equal to y if i want this d to be a metric what should i do naturally it has to be zero and suppose x is not equal to y this is what i say okay you are not me therefore it must be one you understand this take two point two points meaning x and y in x okay they may not be distinct take x and y in x if x equal to y the distance naturally has to be zero because metric the second property of the metric demands that okay now suppose x is not equal to y then it must be non negative real number what is it it's always one immaterial of what is x what is y the moment x is not equal to y distance between x and y must be one good very good now is it a metric so as usual i am going to skip one two they are all tri trivial so let us assume okay check it or check them now triangle inequality what is that i have to do whether dx y is less than equal to dx t plus d t y for every t that is you fix give x and y in capital x i want to prove whether this is true all right okay let's try to understand this okay let's do that okay now notice that d takes only two values what are the values 0 and 1 right now suppose one of these guys okay one of them is 1 either this is one or this one there is nothing to prove why if one of them is one the other one will be non negative therefore the sum will be greater than equal to one but what is dxy either it has to be zero or it has to be one do you understand this yes if one of them is one i claim this inequality is obvious because if one of them is one the other quantity is non negative therefore this sum is greater than equal to one but dxy okay take takes values either 0 or 1 therefore it is either 0 or 1 so in any case this will be less than or equal to 1 because this object is greater than or equal to 1 yeah okay therefore we had the cases what first cases one of them is 1 either this is 1 or this is 1 done so what is the left out case left out cases none of them is 1 if none of them is 1 that is dxt is not one and d ty is not one what does that mean dxt takes only two values zero or one it's not one therefore it must be zero this must be zero but dxt is zero if i want it to be a metric what let's look at the definition when it is zero only if x equal to t and when this is zero only if t equal to y you follow that okay so if both these fellows are zero then that follows x must be t and t must be y that in particular this implies x must be y because x is t and t is y therefore x is t but if this is x equal to y then what is this then this side is zero you understand that this is zero plus zero it cannot be one because here x equal to y do you understand please pass review proceed now we will look at example 5 okay suppose x is d is a metric space and a is a non empty subset of you then i have what is called an induced metric by restricting d remember d is a function from x cross x to r with certain properties right 
but a is a subset of x therefore a cross a is a subset of x cross x therefore i can restrict it this is called restriction x a cross a to to make you understand let's look at some symbol my x may be set of cities in india okay a may be set of cities in up right if i know the distance between any two cities in x then i know any the distance between any two cities in a do you understand that that's what it says yeah therefore what does it mean d suppose now a b r and a i have to define what is distance between a and b this is by definition distance between a and b why a and b are points in x and d is defined there do you understand this you can check that this is a metric so this is called induced metric okay that means the moment i have a uh, metric on a set then i have a metric on any non empty subset of x yeah the example is just now i said if i know the distance between any two cities in india then of course i know the distance between any two cities in any state for example okay right this is which example 5 now let's look at example 6 depending upon time i will decide which example i want to do right so example 6 is the easy one suppose x i will write it x1 d1 for the time being and x2 d2 these are metric spaces two metric spaces then i form x which is a cartesian product x1 times x2 what is the this set up all ordered pairs x1 x2 where xi belong to capital xi ordered pairs right okay i want to define a metric on this okay so let me take point x1 x2 and y1 y2 that is x1 is x1 x2 is an x2 y1 is x1 y2 is an x2 so i want to define this is exactly similar to the way i define the d infinity metric can you think how it should be done think of this x okay this is x now i have point okay this is my x1 x2 this is my y1 y2 now what do i know i know the distance between x1 and x2 and i know the distance between y1 and y2 you understand this is my x1 this is my x2 this is my x2 this is my y2 okay this is my x1 this is my y1 right so how did i define d max metric at the same way i define how do i define this is maximum of okay distance between x1 and y1 the first coordinates this is d1 if you want to be very precise d2 of x2 y2 do you understand this this is y1 and y2 they are in the space and in that sorry this is x2 this is x1 okay the same way we are defining please take some time okay notice that analogy with the d infinity metric on r2 so we want to prove as usual d is a metric on the product so i am going to skip 1 2 3 we will directly try to prove that okay it's a triangle inequality true proof i leave it as an exercise exactly similar to the proof of triangle inequality in d in infinity case okay so you if you want to master you should try if you don't get please leave your comment in a future video i will give the proof okay but the best it's very easy it's exactly the same so please do that
Now the last example of this lecture. Now suppose xd is a metric space. Right, I want to define a new metric. Okay, the new metric I will call it the delta. Later, I will don't want to use delta because you, as you know, we are going to do epsilon delta. Therefore, this delta should not interfere with, with that delta. That delta will be a positive real number, whereas this delta is a function from x as x to r. Right? I can call it some other name, but let me call it delta. Later, I will change it. Okay. Maybe we will call it a, a beta or some sort of thing. Beta for B and B for bounded. Yeah, that may be a good idea. Okay, let me try. I should not get confused with that. Okay, let us do that. Okay, so what are the things I want to do? So I will I'm going to define beta, okay, of x, y is, okay, I want to take two numbers, one, and distance between x and y. These are two numbers. D, D of x, y is a real number, non-negative real number. One is also non-negative real number. So now I give you two choices. Should I take minimum or maximum? I Either I want to take minimum or I want to take maximum. Then I will prove then beta is a metric, right? But I'm in a dilemma. Should I take minimum or maximum? How will you resolve that? How will you help me? I want you to help. Very easy. If x equal to y, beta of xy must be zero. Do you understand? So if beta of xy must be zero. Now, if x equal to y, d of xy is zero. And I have one. If I take maximum, then beta of xy will be become one. Beta xx will become one. But it must be zero. Therefore, what should I choose? I should choose minimum. Do you understand this? Very good. Okay. So as usual, I will skip one, two, and three. We will skip. Okay. They are obvious, very easy. You By now, you should know how to do that. So let us try to prove triangle inequalities. What does it prove? You are going to give me x and y in x. Then I want to say beta x, y is equal to beta x, t plus beta t y for any t in x. Yeah, I want to prove this. Do all of you agree? Right. Now let us, before going for, well, let us kind of play with the definition of beta. Right? Now suppose I take beta x y, okay, what is the relation between beta x, y and 1? Do you agree with that? Because beta x, y is minimum of these two numbers. Right? 1 may be minimum or dx, y may be minimum. You understood that? Okay, I don't care. Therefore, beta x, y must be less than 1. For a similar reason, beta x, y must also be less than equal to dxy. Do you understand this? Are you happy? Yeah? Okay. Next. Suppose my dxy is greater than 1. Then what is beta xy? Go back. Dxy is greater than 1. My beta xy must be minimum of 1 and dxy. Since dxy is greater than 1, what should it be? It should be 1. You follow that? Yes? Okay. Now, suppose beta xy equal to 1, what can I conclude? Go back. See, beta xy is minimum of 1 and dxy. Therefore, beta xy must be less than or equal to 1. And beta xy must also be less than or equal to dxy. Therefore, what do I know? dxy must be less than or equal to 1. Do you understand this? Huh? Please don't nod. Okay. Go through. 
beta x y is one. What did you see? Beta is always less than or equal to. It's a minimum of this number. Therefore, it must be less than or equal to d x y. But beta x y is one. Therefore, it must. They chose. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. See. That's why I told you. Do I hope you did not. <laughs> What is less than equal to dx y, right? Beta x y is less than equal to one and this one. Therefore, it's less than equal to dx y. But beta x y is one. Therefore, dx y is greater than equal to one. You see that dx y is greater than one. Naturally, beta x y is equal to one. Therefore, I can actually put this way now. Do you follow this? Dx y is greater than equal to one. You put only beta x y equal to one. Make sure you understand this. Is it clear? <laughs> okay. Next, suppose d x y is less than or equal to one. Then what is delta x y? Delta x y is what? It is a minimum of one and d x y, right? Suppose dx y is strictly less than one, then delta x y will be dx y, right? Because dx y is strictly less than one, then this will be the. Suppose dx y equal to one, then it is minimum of one and one. Therefore, say again one, but that that case also dx y. Do you understand that? Therefore, dx y. Less than equal to one, okay, implies delta x y equal to d x y. Okay, please play review. Okay, pass review and proceed. See, whenever some such new things come, it's my practice without going into the proof directly. I try to play with this because in the proof you will need it. When I say that the proof becomes more difficult. You may even get confused. Whereas, if you play with it, you would already have some kind of a reasonably good idea how to work with this new concept. See, again, I did a mistake. Do you? How many of you under followed? I interchanged a bit. Okay, I used to delta in place of beta <laughs> because the last twenty thirty years I have been always using delta for this metric. So my brain always thinks of is delta. It is actually beta. Here also, did I do that? Yeah. Okay. Now let's come back. We are ready for the proof. So I want to prove beta of x y is less than equal to beta of x t plus beta of t y. Is that clear to all? Okay. This is true for every t I want to claim. Sorry, in x. Okay. Suppose one of them is one. See, remember, beta always is less than or equal to one. Do you understand that? We have seen that beta is always less than or equal to one, no matter what x and y you choose. Right? Okay. Therefore, this is less than or equal to one. Suppose is beta x t one of them. One of them, as I said earlier. Let me write that. One of these is one. Yeah, you understand that? Now I want to prove beta x t. See, if one of this is one, please pay attention. Do not get intimidated. This is very easy because many times teachers don't prove that. They will simply say, "Leave it to you to verify." If one of them is one, let us say beta x t is one. For definite, let us say. Then one plus beta t y. Okay, this is greater than equal to one because this is non-negative. But this object is nothing other than beta x t, and this is beta t y. You understand that? But let's take take beta x y. But I would observe for any x and y, beta x y is always less than equal to one, right? But one is less than equal to one plus beta t y because this one. But that is one is nothing other than beta x t plus beta t y. You follow that? Yes. So what do you think I have proved? 
If one of these fellows is one, I proved the result. What? <coughs> right? So that case one is over. What is case two? Case two is beta xt. My choice of t is like that. Beta xt is less than one. And beta OT is also less than one. Yes? Okay. You follow that? Okay. Now beta xt is less than one. Beta t is less than one. Now what is that you expect? I want to say okay. Now notice that beta xt is less than to distance between x and t. Go back. Beta is always less than equal to d. Yeah? Right. Now, beta xt is less than 1. If beta xt is less than 1, what have you concluded? Huh? If you have concluded, it must be dxy. Right? If beta xt is less than 1, notice that beta xt is minimum of 1 and dxt, right? It is less than 1. So what does it mean? But beta xt is one of them. It cannot be 1. Therefore, this implies beta xt is dxt. Do you follow that? Beta xt is less than 1. Beta xt must be either 1 or dxt. It cannot be 1 because it's a minimum. Minimum must be one of them. Can minimum one be the minimum? If that be the case, beta x must t must be one. That's wrong. Therefore, beta x must be dx t. Do you understand? Okay. The beta x t is less than equal to sorry, beta x y is less than equal to dx y, but dx y is less than equal to dx t plus d t y. Do you understand? Beta x y is less than equal to dx y, but dx y by triangle inequality for d is less than equal to that. But remember, beta xt is less than 1. Therefore, beta xt is nothing other than dxt. Therefore, it is beta xt. And d, beta yt is also less than 1. That means that should be beta ty. So, I approved beta xy is less than equal to beta xt plus beta ty. So, we approved triangle inequality for this case also. Right? So, the met, b is also a metric. So we had looked at some, how many examples, seven examples, you will see throughout the course, I will be coming back to only these examples, okay. But the first three examples are very geometric, okay, the last ones are something, okay. So please go through that and as I said, the triangle inequality for R2 with Euclidean metric or Pythagorean metric, I have not given the proof, as, but the proof, as I said, will be available in another video, R and with the dot product. In that, I will prove cauchy schwarz inequality. From that, I will also deduce the triangle inequality for the Euclidean metric D2. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed. Okay, we'll meet again. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe.